In the last video, we learned that we could construct probability histograms of our binomial probability distributions. And they make very lovely pictures of that. And we can kind of analyze them just like we would a table. And if you actually want to find the specific values, you can either have them given to you or you could calculate them yourselves using the binome PDF value of your calculator, function of your calculator. So now we want to compare how the graphs compare and kind of gather some ideas about how this is going to work for larger sample spaces. So the first thing I want us to think about is that if n is equal to 15, which graph represents p values of 0.2, p being your probability of success, p being 0.5, or p being 0.8, and explain. Okay, so I put little arrows here to kind of show you where the mean would be, the mean being your balance point. So you can see this one would have a balance point somewhere in the 12 region. This would have someone in the 3 region and so on. So one way or another, it's, it's over here someplace, right? Whereas this one down here, because it's so symmetrical, it'd be right smack dab in the middle, right? That line right there, okay? Now, how do I know which one's which? Well, I think it's a little bit obvious, but C is actually 0.5. And that's because it's perfectly symmetrical. And if you want to think about it in terms of the mean, your n is equal to 15. Let me type that, 15. And then that's your n. And then you want to multiply it by p, right, which is 0 0.5. That would mean that your mean is 7.5. And if you look at this one, the mean is right there at the 7 to 8 mark, right? So this one is p equals 0 0.5. Come on. And you can see it because the mean is, oh, let me type it up, mu sub x is equal to 15 times 0 0.5, which is 7.5. And remember, that's the balance point of your histogram. All right, so that one was the easy one. Now we get to the two hard ones. So let me bring this up here and paste it. Okay, so if we had a mean of, excuse me, n is 15, if we have 0 0.2, 0 0.2, let's see what number that would be. So 15 times 0 0.2 would be a mean of 3. That would mean that your balance point's on the low end. Well, that's not this one. That is this one over here, right? So this one has to be 0.2 because that'll have a mean that's a low number. And you can see on this graph that your balance is over here on the low side. Another way to think about it is that, look, if your probability of success is 0.2, then most of the time you're gonna have zero success, one, two, three, four, five successes. It'd be very rare to have 10 or 12 successes out of 15 if your chance of success on any one trial is 0.2. Think about it like um, a multiple choice question. If you had a multiple choice question where you had a 0.2 chance of getting it right, you're not going to get that many of them right, right? So you'd expect to have low values on this, not high values. By the same token, if you had a 0.8% chance of success, let's say you were playing with a loaded die, for example, and you're going to toss that loaded die 15 times, well, you expect, if it's loaded, to have a whole bunch of times where it's going to work out like you think. So 15 times 0.8 would be 12. So for example, if I had a loaded die that's loaded to roll eights, or it's me, not eights, fives, 0.8% of the, or 0.8 of the time, 80% 8, of the time, sorry. That would mean that I would expect about 12 fives to show up if I roll the die 15 times because it's loaded for fives, right? So this one would be where the chances are on the high end, which means your mean is on the high end. This one has the chances of success on the low end. So that means you expect to be on the low side of successes. So over here at the zero to eight range. And this one's smack dab in the middle. So that's why you're kind of evenly spread and you have a lot of successes on the low and the high end. All right, so that's how to compare those ones. Let me type up just a little bit about it. There we go. So we have p equals 0.8 is a high probability of success. So the number of successes will be on the right side, the high side. p equals 0.2 is a low probability. So the successes will be over on the left side, the low side. And 0.5 will be evenly distributed. And don't forget that the mean is the balance point. So another way you can help yourself figure it out is by figuring out the mean and going from there. 
All right, now what if we take the one that is 0.2 and we look at it a little bit further? So I have it graphed P, P equals probability of success is 0.2, but I have it for three different sizes. N is 15, N is 30, and N equals 70. And I want you to pay very close attention. So over here, this is actually the same graph that we have right here. I just cut this one off at 14, whereas down here I, I extended the axis just because I want you to be able to compare the three graphs. All right, so right here, and we stop. Technically, the graph stops at 15 because you can't get any higher than n equals 15 in this problem, but so be it. Then I use the same scale, but I have n is equal to 30, and you can see what happens. It becomes a little bit more spread. It has a little bit um, wider range, if you will. And then I let n be 70, and something kind of magical happens. The distribution starts following a very particular pattern that we know well and love called a normal pattern, a bell-shaped pattern. We saw it in chapter three in, with the empirical rule, and it's going to come back with a big old vengeance in chapter seven. Right, so let me type that up. So notice how this last distribution right here, it's the magic one. It's when n is 70, this distribution becomes normal bell-shaped. And we first saw that in section 3.2 for the empirical rule, and it's all of and all of chapter 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We're going to be working with that curve a lot, right? Very important curve to us. And what we're learning here is that if n is large enough, then the binomial distribution becomes more and more normal like and that's a good thing for us because the normal curve is actually a very powerful curve that we'll be able to use all sorts of different um you mean in all sorts of different situations and we'll have some different probability distribution functions for working with that now what makes it large enough to find that well that's tricky but i wanted to show you this little calculation n times p for us is 70 because 70 was our n, p was our chance of success, which is 0.2, and then 1 minus p is the probability of failure, which is 0.8. And if you multiply those three numbers, oops, it didn't like me, 70, there we go, times 0 0.2 times 0 0.8, you get 11.2. See that? It is larger than 10. And that is going to be our rule for determining whether or not something is binomial, excuse me, is more or less a normal shape. This is your rule of thumb. It's not 100% set in stone, but it's the one we're going to work with in later chapters. Namely, that a binomial distribution will be approximately normal, approximately normally distributed, if n times p times 1 minus p is greater than 10, greater than or equal to 10. This is absolutely essential for all the rest of this course, right? We're going to need to know that we have a normal distribution in order to be able to do the things that we need to do in those later chapters. So this is going to come back to haunt you in a big way. And you're seeing here why it happens. If something follows a binomial distribution and your n is really big, then it will shift more or less to a normal curve. And that normal curve is very, very powerful for us. And we'll talk more about that in chapter seven. So I'll see you back here then.